Today I learned some pretty valuable information. That Quinn Hughes is without a shadow of a doubt a pure NHL sniper. The Vancouver Canucks are tied with the New York Islanders for sixth in the entire NHL right now. Right now, they're tied with the same Islanders team they just defeated in overtime for sixth in the entire NHL. Now, that tie could get a little bit more crowded as the Colorado Avalanche are indeed playing later today. If they win, they will be in that tie as well. But for now, Vancouver's tied for sixth in the league. Sure, they have more games played, but the points are points, and the points depict the standings. That is absolutely crazy for February 1st. Think about that. We're a month into 2020, and the Canucks are tied for sixth out of 31 teams, and boost their lead on the second place in the division by two points. It's now a four-point lead over the Edmonton Oilers and the Calgary Flames. They're each at 60 points, so it's really nice to see the spreading out of the Pacific Division. But this one comes against an Islanders team that, honestly, coming into this one, I was really scared of. Not because I think the Canucks have absolutely no chance to win, but because the Islanders are probably, like, the best team the Canucks have faced since the St. Louis Blues, and I know they beat the St. Louis Blues, but the Blues game was a really big, just grind-out kind of game where, at any time, the Blues could have scored. So, coming into this one, I was thinking to myself, okay, the Canucks against good teams don't really take control like they do against the not-as-good teams. Against the teams that are at the top of the standings, the Canucks kind of let them depict the pace, and they just play to the other team's speed. Well, that's exactly what we saw here in this game. Or at least, that's what I saw in this game. I slept at like 6.30 in the morning, because Facebook Messenger is a very useful application for my entertainment purposes, and I didn't wake up until 10.50. Yeah, the alarm was set for 9.30. I was planning to sleep about only three hours. I think I got the wrong side of the bed, too. My throat was kind of clogged when I woke up, so my voice kind of feels really bad at the moment. But I missed out on the first period, so I missed out on the first and second goals of the game, scored by JT Miller and then by Michael Del Call. So just for the sake of recapping the game, let's go over those two goals right here. The first goal, PD passes it to Tanev, he rips a shot off the post, then Thomas Grice down and out in the crease, kind of bats the puck through his legs with his stick, out in front of JT Miller who shoots it into the open net. Because Grice was the guy who swatted the puck away, that technically counts as possession, so it's an unassisted goal for Miller. Realistically though, that's a goal set up by Tanev and PD, so whatever. Whatever. Miller has 20 goals on the year. That's awesome. We're 52 games into the season. And JT Miller is over here with 20 goals on the season. 31 assists coming into this game. Miller is legitimately, like, such a good player, and I don't need to tell you that, but still, it feels nice thinking about that trade back at the draft, seeing the reaction, and watching how it has played out. Then, Michael Dalcall gets a nice tip-in out in front off of a shot from the perimeter from Josh Bailey. That ties things up at 1. The second period is where I start to watch the game, and I immediately note the speed. I note the possession, and I note how each team is kind of afraid to just let it rip. It's more of a game of trying to find the best opportunity possible, rather than forcing your own opportunities yourself. It's kind of like a chess match in a way. And that's what I noticed immediately upon watching the first few minutes of the second period. Darn, the Islanders are moving really fast, but the Canucks are matching that pace. Now, the Islanders did have the majority of the opportunities in that period, but Vancouver had more shots on paper. So, it was really an interesting little battle that I was watching out there, but eventually, 
it's Quinn Hughes who, at the 10 minute mark, just throws the puck towards the net. It bounces off of an Islander guy in front and right through Grice. It ends up in the back of the net because it rolls over the goal line. And I was like, yeah, Quinn Hughes, that's his seventh on the year. He is now tied with Kale McCarr for the rookie scoring leader in this year's NHL. Awesome. Tie up that Kale McCarr, eh? So Quinn Hughes gives the Canucks the 2-1 to lead. The play ensues, and it's still a chess match kind of scenario. The Islanders are coming in here with speed. The Canucks are stealing it, coming back into the zone with speed. And then on a delayed penalty... Take a look at it, it's Brandon Sutter who takes the puck up, shoots it on goal, he absolutely rips it. The rebound comes out in front and Tim Schaller is there to backhand it in. This one was a really nice one, because it's a result of hard work. Tim Schaller gets his first goal in like 30 games or whatever. Not a good stat, but still. Schaller's at 5 goals on the year, it's 3-1 to one Vancouver, and things are looking great. Jordan Eberle gets a goal towards the end of the second period to bring the Islanders to within one, and then at the end of the second period, Adam Gaudet takes a tripping penalty against Matthew Barzal, who is now probably the fastest skater in the league, we could rightfully say, because he beat McDavid. Oh my goodness. But Barzal also gets a penalty on the play for embellishment. That was something that I was kind of surprised about. Watching Shorty and Cheech justify the embellishment, I could see where they were coming from, but you could tell that they were kind of surprised too, that that's where the result went down. Either way, it's four on four, and nothing happens, but then the third period happens, and this is where the Canucks are in ultimate defensive mode. That chess match that we were talking about earlier in the game, no, nah, it's not really there anymore. It's just the Islanders pounding it on, and the Canucks hanging on for dear life. They're teetering over the top rope, and the Islanders are trying their best to just unhook the Canucks. And it takes them 19 minutes to do that, because... Jacob Markstrom was in there making some good saves, Tanev was making some good interceptions, the Canucks were doing some pretty good defensive plays, but the Islanders don't pull the goalie until like a minute and a half left. And a lot of people were speculating it's because they fear the insurance line of Ericsson, Pearson, and Horvat, and how good those guys have been on the empty nets. But I don't care, because ultimately it works out for them. It's a shot from the point, it's Ryan Pollock who absolutely can bomb one. He takes a shot, it's off a of Pearson stick, it bounces to the side of the net, and Brock Nelson is there to seal the deal, get the Islanders tied up with like 26 seconds left. Yikes. Canucks fans were feeling kind of hopeless, because you know how earlier in the season, Overtime was just really bad for the Canucks. They lost three straight in overtime, then they won three straight in overtime, and it's been a really long time since we've had overtime. The Canucks, in their recent good winning streak, haven't played in overtime at all. So, it was interesting to see them go back into overtime, and I was really interested as to how they were going to be doing, because they hadn't been in three on three for so long. But nevertheless, it's JT Miller who steals the puck behind the Canucks goal line, does a really risky move to start the rush out himself, crosses the blue line, sends it to Petey, Petey finds Quinn Hughes, Hughes goes down low in the Islander zone, swoops back, comes up to the high slot, shoots it on net, and boom, it's in! Quinn Hughes has his second of the game, his eighth of the season, he now has the sole possession leading number one spot in the rookie scoring race over Kale McCarr. JT Miller with 32 assists on the year, Pedersen with 32 assists on the year, Miller with his second point of the game, and the Vancouver Canucks win this one 4-3 in overtime, Grice probably should have had that one, but I don't care, because the Canucks have now tied the same Islanders team for 6th in the league in the NHL. Oh man, that feels good. Quinn Hughes is an absolute sniper. What an absolute beauty of a player. Imagine getting this guy at 7th overall over Code Kanyemi, who was sent down to the AHL in what was rightfully the best move. I'll make a video about that in a few hours, but Quinn Hughes, what a snipe. Hope you enjoyed this video, Social Dash Hostline 9, and 
拜。